I'm back. And what better way to celebrate than by giving away $5,000. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried to give away my money. All I ask in return is for someone to prove that the Quran is right. I offered $500 to prove that one Quran verse was true. No one was up to the challenge. So I offered $1,000 to prove another one was true. Still no luck. Most recently, I upped the prize to $2,500 and made the challenge as simple as it gets. Just prove a name was in use in the first century Israel. Alas, no one could come through for the God and Prophet. Is it really so hard to prove the Quran? Am I really so unreasonable to expect the supposed speech of the Almighty to hold up to the slightest bit of scrutiny? No. That couldn't be it. Maybe the price just isn't sufficient. I can fix that. It's been a while since I put out a video. I won't bore you with all the details as to why, but in short, I'm either 100% all in or I'm not in at all. But I'm back now and I'm throwing myself 100% back into defending Christianity and destroying Islam. If you want to know more, Check out my companion video. Where have I been? Where are we going? Now, back to the main event. In my last challenge, I examined Surah 1928, which claims that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was the sister of Aaron. The Quran seems to have confused two Marys that lived a millennia apart. All I asked for was one single person named Aaron from the first century. We know thousands and thousands of contemporary names, not one named Aaron. Let's take a look at another naming heir. Surah 19.7 declares, O Zechariah, indeed, we give you good tidings of a boy whose name will be John. We have not assigned to any before this name. Other translations leave the Arabic Yahya untranslated in place of the familiar English. But either way, the idea seems clear enough. The name was created by Allah for Yahya, John the Baptist. Where could the author of the Quran have gotten such an idea? Was there any previous text that could have inspired him? Luke 1, 59-61 And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. And they would have called him Zechariah after his father. But his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives is called by this name. It's pretty easy to see how a human author could have misremembered or intentionally exaggerated oral tradition about the Baptist and changed none of your relatives to no one ever. And that's that. Or at least it would be if Muslims didn't have to defend the ridiculous idea that their scripture is the literal speech of God. So with the simple explanation out, Muslims have to jump through hoops. Different Muslims will offer different excuses. I, I mean explanations. And maybe they are happy with any random nonsense. But for the thinking person, an explanation offered will have to be more compelling than the simple one already given. The most common explanation I hear from common Muslims is that John and Yahya were actually different people. This is absurd, and no Muslim apologist or scholar that I'm aware of has ever offered such a suggestion. But let's take a look anyway. Drawing upon Ibn Kithar's Stories of the Prophets and Longstanding Islamic Tradition, Islamic Landmarks says the following about Yahya. Zechariah's one disappointment was that his wife was barren. Yahya's mother's womb was brought back to life after being barren until old age. 
Yaya was born six months before Isa. Yaya preferred solitude. He ate locusts or grasshoppers. Yaya pronounced that the marriage of Herod would be incestuous. Salome plotted to achieve her aim. She dressed attractively and danced before Herod. Embracing her, he offered to fulfill whatever she desired. At once, she told him, I would love to have the head of Yaya. Ignoring the confusion of some details, this is clearly the biblical account of John. Let's move on. The other popular explanation I hear is that John wasn't the first John, but rather he was just the first John, so named directly by Allah. This explanation, too, is normally avoided by apologists and learned authority figures in Islam. And for good reason. To give the verse such an interpretation is to make it meaningless, question-begging nonsense. No one can verify the claim one way or another, which invalidates the apparent sign being expressed by the verse. A sign can't be a sign if no one, including John's contemporaries, could verify it. Furthermore, John is the only person directly named by Allah in the Quran. Period. Let's assume the Quran makes sense. A bold claim I know and see if the professional apologists can offer anything better than the popular level Muslims. Enter Islamic Awareness! The central claim of their attempt is that Yahya and John are in fact different names. Now wait, isn't that the same thing we already discussed as nonsense when offered by lay Muslims? No. Islamic Awareness is a bit more clever. They don't suggest there are two people involved, but rather that the real name of John was Yahya. They favor the idea that he had two names, but alternatively one could suggest that the Bible simply got it wrong. Their article is filled with errors, distortion, and empty rhetoric. But I will try to ignore that and distill it down to an actual argument and keep the video about the viability of said argument rather than the intellectual dishonesty of Islamic awareness. A difficult task. Once we start to look at the evidence, we can see why Islamic awareness didn't adopt the air theory. The Gospels are unanimous in calling the Baptist Ioannis, the Greek transliteration of the Hebrew Yohanan. Muslims will claim the Gospels are corrupted, Without any evidence, of course. But to any historian, a contemporary document is a lot better source of someone's name than a text written more than 600 years later. But it gets worse. Josephus, the first century Jewish historian, records numerous details about the Baptist's life. The details match up with the Gospel accounts, confirming their accuracy, and making it clear the same person is in mind, as you can see on your screen. But what name does Josephus use? Ioannis, of course. No Yahya in sight. So the first century evidence is unanimous. The Baptist was known as John and John alone. If Islamic awareness, or any honest person, wants to doubt that, they will need some solid evidence. To support their case, IA appeals to the writings of the Mandeans which sometimes do refer to the Baptists as Yahia Yohanna. The Mandeans are a small religious sect, historically located primarily in what is now Iraq. The group has been much misunderstood, erroneously being called Christians of St. John by the West and Sabians by the Islamic world. More on that title in a moment. The group certainly predates Islam although their writings are notoriously difficult to date. Most Mandean texts, as we have them today, are amalgamations of fragments composed at different times. Kurt Rudolph explains, Only painstaking analyses of Mandean literature which was not exactly composed and collected on logical and consistent lines 
make it possible to separate older material from younger. When we see close correspondence between Islam and Mendaism, there are three possibilities. Islam borrowed from Mendaism, the other way around, or both reflect a historical reality or third source. Normally, Islamic awareness suggests others copied from Islam, which leads them to ridiculous conclusions, like that the Talmud was written after the Quran, for example. But if Mandaism borrowed the name Yahya from Islam, then it can't count as an independent source. And indeed, that's exactly what scholars think happened. Islamic awareness actually admits this, but then summarily dismisses it. Western scholars have suggested various explanations ranging from the name Yahya being inserted into the scriptures at a later date to Muslims forcing its use upon Mandaeans. None of these theories are supported by any historical evidence. This is an example of a common trick in Islamic apologetics. Say something that you can justify as technically correct, but which is actually totally false by the common sense meaning of the words. It is technically true that there is no document that says, the Mendeans borrowed the name Yahya from Islam nor would we expect such a document to exist. There is, however, ample evidence of borrowing in general, and the proportion of Arabic loanwords in a text is even a major way that Mandean works are dated. GR7 is a tract devoted to John's wisdom teachings, and his name turns up in the formulaic introduction and at the very end. In both instances, his Arabic name, Yaia, appears. So GR7 may well mark a younger post-Islamic stratum. There are many examples of known borrowing, but I'll keep it to just one. It is well known that the Mandeans adopted the Islamic term Sabians, a term they would never called themselves, and promoted their devotion to John in order to win the favor of Muslims who respected John and whose scriptures called the Sabians people of the book. Is it really that outrageous to think that the Arabic name for the Baptist would have been adopted at the same time? But let's assume for a minute that the scholarly consensus is wrong, and that the name Yahya didn't enter Mandaism in this time period. Let's assume it's a valid historical source, contra to the scholars. The discourses of John the Baptist contained therein are without direct historical value. This is the most generous assumption we can possibly make, and it's only going to make things worse for Islamic awareness. They point out a couple places the name occurs in Mandean literature, and then go on to say, A Mandaic dictionary throws further light on the names Yahya and Yoanna, as used in their holy books. And then they quote the dictionary. Yaya, a man's Mawasa name. After an irrelevant aside about the Arabic root, they continue. Every Mandaean has two names, his Mawasha, or zodiacal name, and his Lakab, or worldly name. E.S. Drower explains the difference between the Mawasha and Lakab names. The latter is usually a Mohammedan name and is used for all lay purposes. The former, i.e. Malwasha, is his real and spiritual name and is used on all religious and magic occasions. So in Ya'ia Yohanan, Ya'ia is a Malwasha name, or the real name, and Yohanan is a Lakab or lay name, as anyone can see from the entry in the Mandaic Dictionary. What is interesting here is that the Quran uses only the real and spiritual name, i.e. Ya'ya, and that more or less is the entirety of their case, that the Mawasa, or real, name of John was Yahya. For this argument to work, Islam can't have borrowed from Mandaism, but rather, Mandaism must independently reflect the same historical 
truth. That means that Mandean beliefs about John's name, at least, must be true. And here we see Islamic awareness, desperation on full display. First, the dictionary. You might think that it's a dictionary of the Mandaic religion, based on the title. And Islamic awareness no doubt wants you to believe just that. But actually, it is a dictionary of the Mandaic language. The dictionary entry is merely stating that Yaia is a Mawasa name, nothing more. But wait, that same dictionary entry then states that Johanna is the Aramaic form of the same name, directly contradicting the whole argument IA has been making. This is the best they could do. Quote minor dictionary of the Mandaic language, not the religion, and hope the brevity of the entry is confusing enough that the reader doesn't understand what the entry is actually saying. It actually gets worse. There are only a few dozen Mawasha names in total. Here's a complete list. Notice the second name on the list? Yep, Johanna is also a Mawasa name. I couldn't find any source that claims that Yaia alone is the Baptist Mawasha name. Islamic awareness did not say any commentators to support their claims. One has to wonder whether the claim that Yaia is the Mawasa name is purely their own invention. All the actual commentators agree. Yaia and Johanna are simply the Arabic and Aramaic forms of the same name transliterated into Mandaic. Yaya, the Arabic form of Johanna, John. Yaia is often used with the original Aramaic form as Yaia Johanna. Yaia preached in the nights, Johanna in the evenings of the nights, retains both the Aramaic and Arabic forms of John's name. Sometimes John is referred to by one name, sometimes the other, and sometimes both. Sadly, we haven't actually hit rock bottom yet. Let's look at that quote on the Mawasha name. The latter is usually a Mohammedan name and is used for all lay purposes. The former, i.e. the Mawasha, is his real and spiritual name and is used on all religious and magic occasions. Presumably, Islamic awareness chose this quote because it contains the word real, and they knew that they could twist that to work with their argument. They want you to think that real means historical means the Bible is wrong. However, that's not what the author, E.S. Drower, meant. The Mawasha name is often kept secret, is used only in religious, or magical, contexts, and is not the name a person is commonly known as. In the same book, just a few lines down, Drower explains. When an infant is to be named, the priest takes the zodiacal sign of the month in which its birth occurred, counts from round the zodiac circle, and calculates from it the sign of the hour. The sign of the day does not matter. From the numerical value which results, they subtract the value of the mother's name. For all astrological information, the priests consult the astrological codex Safar Mawasha, the Book of the Zodiac. Islamic awareness knew this. They knew for that John's real name to be Yaia, it would mean that his name was derived from an astrological ritual and used in the practice of magic. They also knew that these practices are forbidden in Islam. Yet, they chose to quote the source anyway and hope the reader wouldn't look it up. They decided to deceive and pretend sources offensive to Muslims are true in a desperate attempt to save the Quran. Ouch. It seems even Islamic awareness knows their argument is garbage, because in the final section they offer an alternative. 
that the Quran has been mistranslated, and the verse should actually read, O Zechariah, indeed we give good tidings of a boy whose name will be John. We have not given anyone uniqueness like him before. This might be linguistically possible, but if we assume the Quran makes sense, then the context matters, and the context is the naming of the child, not about his supposed uniqueness. It would be quite odd for Allah to switch from stating the child will be named John or Yahya to saying he will be unique while using a word that can also mean name. If the Quran is as perfectly clear as it claims, then only one reading makes sense. Additionally, the claim would be meaningless since all people are in fact unique in some sense. This is why nearly all translators opt for the name itself being unique, and why Islamic Awareness only offered the other translation as a brief note at the end of the article. If they actually thought it was viable, they would have not appealed to astrologically derived real names as a proof of the standard translation. So where does this leave us? The Quran appears to have exaggerated or confused the statement that John had no ancestors with the same name to mean that no one at all had the same name. Popular level Muslim arguments are non-starters, and Islamic awareness attempt made a historically improbable appeal to astrology to support their theory. What other options do Muslims have? A fatwa on islamweb.net offers some hope. They say there are two possibilities. One is the no one like him alternative reading that we already dismissed. On the other, they say, the first interpretation that no one before was named John is not reported on the authority of an infallible source entailing using it to challenge what was stated in the Quran. Moreover, one should know that the present-day versions of the other divine scriptures have been altered and distorted, as all is stated in several places in the Quran, such as... where exactly? How can you be sure that the verses in the present-day Bible referring to other people before Yahya who bore the same name were not falsely added to the original book, Gospel, revealed by Allah? This is then followed by some nonsense about how since they know Muhammad couldn't read or write, he couldn't possibly have confused the gospel account. So the dozens of Johns in the Old Testament must have been inserted into the gospel because the Quran must be true. Terrible, circular nonsense masquerading as an argument. But honestly... I think it's probably the best a Muslim can do while remaining honest with what the text of the Quran actually says. It would be ridiculous enough to think that Jews and Christians conspired to insert the name Yohanan in the Old Testament text 24 times, referring to about 16 different people. But actually, the problem is far worse than Islam Web is aware. In the lexicon of Jewish names in late antiquity, Tal Elan lists 128 occurrences of the name Yohanan, dated from between 330 BC and 200 AD. This makes it the fifth most popular male name, accounting for 4% of the population, or presumably tens of thousands of actual people. Elan's references come from a wide variety of sources, literature, ossuaries, inscriptions, non-literary papyri, and so on, making one wonder how conspirists changed all these materials centuries later. Some of the instances are later than the Baptist, of course, but the name appears to have become popular because one of the heroes of the Maccabean Revolt was named Yohanan, some 160 years before the Baptist was born. A few on the list are of doubtful historicity, but the majority need some explaining if the Quran is true. So here is the contest. 
established by scholarly consensus that all of the 127 other Johns listed by Elon either Pope State the Baptist or are of doubtful historicity. Do that, and $5,000 is yours! Admittedly, this contest is considerably more involved than the previous ones. But you didn't think it was going to get easier as the prize grew larger, did you? Full contest rules and a list of my sources can be found in the pinned comment. If this task seems too difficult, then maybe it's time to admit the obvious. The Quran contains errors, and therefore cannot be the literal speech of God. But hey, the choice is yours. You can pretend, There is no problem. The Quran confirms early scriptures and is a trustworthy witness over them. Or you can start using your brain and realize that the unanimous testimony of history is a much more reliable source of truth than the confused ramblings of a certain 7th century Arabian prophet. Thanks for watching.